Okay, we're nearly, we're on the home run now. Uh, and uh, thanks for your time, it's been awesome, but we've just got a few more questions. Uh, Adelaide's rental yields sitting below the average levels, but uh, let's say they're starting to move through. It, are they the people, are the, are the landlords the people that are creating the volumes in the outer suburbs, do you think? Or are we still talking first home buyers that have kept those volumes up? Really, it comes down to the, uh, the first home buyers, right. I think. I don't, okay. I don't think it's so much the landlords in those outer areas. But again, watch this space as the market transitions, we, we'll probably see a, a bit of a change in what's happening. Now, uh, just the last couple of questions regarding the pre-listing activity. You follow people, like you've got a preemptive approach to your data. So you can forward almost predict what's going to happen. Um, we mentioned it very briefly before. How's the pre-listing activity looking for the end of the year? What we found is uh, when someone does pre-listing activity, it takes about four to six weeks for that to transfer into a, a listing. And then obviously after that, sometime it turns into a, a, an actual sale. What we've found is that uh, nationally, the pre-listing activity has been fairly flat leading into to spring. If anything, it's been falling leading into spring. So that leads us to believe that spring nationally is probably going to be a quieter time for the property market. However, that's not the case in Adelaide. What we found in Adelaide is that it has been steadily increasing the level of pre-listing activity until about mid-August. We've seen a bit of a downturn mid-August and we're putting that down once again to the, to the, the election. election. But uh, Adelaide certainly has seen a, a mounting level of uh, pre-listing activity, which suggests that spring in Adelaide is probably going to be a little bit stronger here than it will be in most of the other capital cities. Right, good. Now, that's been fantastic. Just uh, let's sort of wrap it all up in a bit of a summary. I'll just throw a couple of questions at you. Market conditions, generally, just overview? Fairly fairly flat for the remainder of this year. Um, you're not gonna see too much growth in values, but we're certainly not gonna see those huge falls in values that some people suggest are imminent for the Australian market. The variations in performance between the different markets, who are the winners, who are the losers? Over the last 12, 18 months, Melbourne has certainly been one of the winners, Darwin and Canberra, and the losers have really been uh, Brisbane and, and Perth. And Adelaide, just a steady performer, not doing too badly, not doing too greatly. And, and the best performers in the Adelaide market, top end, bottom end, middle end? The top end market over the last 12 months, and then over the last three months, it's been the lower end of the market. But again, we think that may be due to the election and some of that volatility on the share market uh, that we saw back in June and July. Population growth in South Australia driven by uh, defence and driven by mining and driven by uh, education. Um, big impact, small impact? Huge impact. I mean, we, when, you, when you've got all these new people coming to an area, they need to live somewhere. And what we're finding right across the nation is that uh, developers are finding it very hard to get finance to build new, new products. So over time, that's going to create a flaw under any price falls that people suggest might happen. And we saw that happen back in 2008. And it's going to create more upwards pressure on prices because there's going to be greater competition for that available stock. So no 40% uh, burst in the bubble that has been predicted by some of the states? Certainly for, not. For Adelaide, Certainly not in our view, no. Certainly okay. not in our view anywhere in Australia, let alone Adelaide. Great. Um, and overall, market conditions, buoyant, last 15 months, any predictions moving forward past uh, Christmas? Past Christmas, uh, probably starting to depend what happens with interest rates. We're thinking it's going to be fairly, fairly level playing field to Christmas and probably the first half of next year as well. And then uh, who really knows? It's probably very dependent on what happens externally, uh, how, our, how our mining sector continues to go and uh, if other economies can pull themselves out, such as America and, and Europe, out of the, uh, the mess they're in at the moment. So we're thinking for the next six to nine months, probably fairly flat conditions. Uh, maybe Adelaide and, and some of those markets that have been lagging, though, uh, to outperform markets like Melbourne, Canberra and Darwin. And finally, any impact from the hung parliament now? Gillard looks like she's now got up um, and interest rates. The hung parliament, I think people stress a little bit too much about elections. Uh, really, the budget's probably the thing that's going to impact on the property market more so than, than any election. So I think it's just a, a bit of a mindset that people have, but I don't think it really impacts the, the market too much. We may see some confidence come back into the market now that uh, we've seen the election result seemingly resolved. And interest rates obviously always have an impact on, uh, on home buyers. We've seen that they've stayed put for four months now. Uh, the futures market isn't factoring in any increase in, uh, in interest rates for the remainder of the year, but we'll probably have to wait and see what happens with inflation next time they, those figures come out. And if they're outside of the, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia's 
target range, we may have to see a, a 25 basis point increase. Cameron Kusher, RP Data, that has been absolutely awesome. And I hope the viewers uh, got a lot out of that. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.